Thank you, local band Smoke Out. Anyway, Christian, I can't see you. Now I can see you. Sir, how are you? Before you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh shit, hold on, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Hold on, let me open Twitch back in. So, oh, shit. close Twitch. I'm gonna sheen screen share so you can uh, see my screen ah, okay. and hear the sounds. And now we should be good, so. If I do that, you hear that? I hear that. Cool. First, Christian, if you could, please introduce yourself. Let me know where and whereabouts in the world you are, sir. And plug and promote anything, everything. Sick. You hear me good? Of course. Sick. Awesome. Uh, Christian O'Neill, sing for Chemical Youth. I do music with BG. You can find Chemical Youth here on Spotify, YouTube Chemical Youth, Twitter Chemical Youth 95, Let's see, TikTok, Chemical Youth, Facebook, Chemical Youth, uh, anywhere, Chemical Youth on streaming services. Uh, that's what I do. I am in Southern Oklahoma, unfortunately, but uh, that's how that's how it goes, and that's where I'm at. Born and raised Oklahoma, or moved there? Basically, I moved here when I was like fucking four years old. I was born in Parkland Hospital, Dallas, Texas. <laughs> moved out here. Do you remember Texas uh, at all, or no? I, yeah, I, I have a lot of family out there, so I, I got there all the fucking time, dude. Um, my uncle lives out there, my grandma, so I'm out there quite a bit. Do you recall the first time you opened your mouth and someone said, you're a pretty good singer? Yes. I was actually just talking about that with uh, one of my friends. Is that is that the story you want to fucking start with? Yeah, I want to, oh, me, let's but... start there. Let's start there. Uh, so my dad, my uncle Josh and all them had got me in, you know, fucking Lincoln Park, Disturbed, Drowning Claw, that shit when I was younger. And I would sing you know, at my house just by myself or when my mom was gone or whatever. And uh, my dad and my mom had got me a guitar and I ended up with an acoustic at some point. So I'd kind of play like stuff. And one day on Facebook, dude, this was 2013, 2000. Actually, it was 2012. My, I think it was my sophomore year. I was feeling real brave, dude. And I played this uh, Green Day song on my acoustic. It was that time of your life. And I uploaded it to Facebook, dude, for like, three hours and I deleted it because I got so fucking scared, dude. I was like so scared because I'd never done anything. I was like, oh my God, bro, people are gonna call me a little bitch. They're gonna think I fucking sound like shit. Everybody's school is gonna make fun of me. Little redneck school. And I went to school the next day and one of my best friends that I'd met my freshman year there, Jordan, Millsap, who did a lot of music with me, was like, man, it was like, uh, that actually sounded pretty good. And he's like, I, I heard that, it sounded good. And he's like, oh, why'd you take it down or whatever. This other kid named Michael McCullough, in one of my classes thought it sounded sick and it just blew my mind. I was like, damn. I never re-uploaded it, but uh, here, you know, that was that was it. It was into high school when I really was like, okay, maybe I can fucking sing a little bit. But that was the first one. for like six years after Does that. Does this video you know. still exist or no? I don't know, dude. Hold on. Oh, we're supposed to pound um, a beer, by the way. Or do it again? Sorry, we're supposed to do like a little bit of a, a chug, if I recall. Say that one more time, BG. Do you, can you hear me? I hear you now. I pulled my fucking cord up. Okay. Um, we're supposed to do a chug. Oh, we're doing a chug? Let's fuck win. Let's go. Right. How old were you when, when that when that occurred? I was probably, what would you normally be your fucking sophomore year? Like 16, 15? So, so at that point... Does is your mind racing and, and you think music is for you or what is the next step? Was there was there like a terrible garage band that never exists anymore? That that was the first thing we we've all done those. What was the next step? So yeah, before that, I always played guitar in bands. I played guitar way longer than I've sang ever. So there was a bunch of little garage bands and people. Honestly, bro, like um, by the way, I haven't been on here in two years, dude. You picked me up and put me on your show when I literally had just a few songs out with Chemical Youth. I'm forever grateful. So before all that, though, 
yeah, I was like, chase, dude, people would like chase me through alleys at school and talk shit to me, dude, and call me all kinds of names and throw like rocks at me to do little garage bands. That all sucked, which is one of the reasons I didn't ever upload those videos. So after my friend told me I was pretty good, he was a genius guitar player. And um, we started up this little project called Epiphany, which is on YouTube. And I was, I think, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, I was like 16 when we did that first song on YouTube ever. And next year, I think it turns like 10 years old or some shit. Um, and I always knew from a young age, even before I sang, I was like, music is what I'm going to do. Whether I make it or not is, you know, irrelevant. I just, I, I, I'm not, I know I'm not good at anything else, bro. I suck at fucking everything, dude. You don't. No, and, uh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I think so. But that, that's what happened after that. Uh, we just started kind of getting together and I went through a bunch of bands. When, when, when in high school and, and you're, you're riding around, you're driving around, who are you like screaming at the top of your lungs? this band screaming singing what what are just some bands that you were jamming that you were like oh i can hit these notes because i i've i think maybe at one time in my life had that moment and just just who who was someone that you know just blew your mind that you could do what they do which i think Spencer causes Satello. like a, a spe that the first time i hit a note even close to that dude i was driving Home from high school. My and favorite vocalist, now, by the way. I, I think maybe mine too. But just so you know, dude, like it sounded really bad, but I hit it. And I'm driving home from school. I had to go to work. I worked at Walmart. So this is like P1? This is like P1? Well, uh, it would have been P2. It would have been with uh, Ragnarok because I was trying to hit that okay. note. Yeah. And it was so bad, bro. I started blacking out on the road driving because I didn't have enough air because I didn't know what I was doing. And I remember hitting it, telling that same kid, Jordan, that liked my video. I was like, went to his house like, bro. I swear to God, I can hit that. It sounded so fucking stupid, but I did. I was listening to Periphery, Bless the Fall, um, a lot of older Lincoln Park, uh, Memphis Mayfire at the time. They had Challenger out. A bunch of shit like that, new metalcore, some older shit, but Periphery mainly was the band and Sleeping with Sirens. I was like, I was like, dude, there's no way I'll ever be able to hit those notes. I can't sing like that. How can a man do that? How can anyone do that? And I guess my voice is in that range where if I just stretched it and practiced it and sucked for like eight years that one day I'd suck a little less and be able to hit it comfortably. And that's with any instrument. I love that. Uh, tell me, tell me a band that we would not expect you to listen to, but you, you do, you still jam them. I'm trying to think because I don't, when I'm particularly when I'm driving doing stuff, I don't really listen to a lot of heavy or metal really. I am let's see. I don't know if it's unexpected or not, but like Mariana's Trench. Mariana's know, Trench? Are, okay. Um, I listen to uh, Kiara, a pop singer. It's a female pop singer. I listen to a lot of her stuff. Um, no, I think. Uh, my girlfriend got me way more into Elvis Presley. I like to listen to a lot of old shit, like doo wop stuff. My uh, grandpa was a doo wop artist who actually got put in the Niagara Falls Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Last what? Year. What? Yeah, he's he's dead, but he got fucking put in there. So he's probably looking down. He's like, "Holy shit, dude, that is amazing!" Isn't that crazy? This I didn't even know from... there was a Niagara Niagara Falls Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But more importantly, dude, congratulations and shout out to to your family for just being in that. That's amazing. Yeah, I thought that was so fucking wild, man. Like he passed away when I was like. Um, I was like 12, 13, but I remember I was like, holy crap, dude. Like, cause this is like a year ago or two years ago. And he got put in there. I was like, can you imagine? That's like the story of like, you know, it was just Niagara Falls. It's not like fucking huge, but all the people that, you know, pass away, unfortunately, can you imagine like if they were able to look back and they never think they're going to make the difference that they did. So it's just, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I thought that was pretty wild. That is cool. I would, I would talk shit about that all the time. Anytime you have a story to tell, just like, I'll always be like, well, you know, Fam's in, you know, my family's in the fucking... Yeah, they're in, they're in the hall, I'm just saying. I'll say Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and leave out just Niagara Falls. I'll just leave that up. There you go. Yeah, don't... Oh, really? In the <laughs> Hall of say... Fame? And then and if they get a reaction, be like, yeah, did you know there's a Niagara Niagara Falls yeah. Hall of Fame? And they're like, what? And then, then you They'll got like, them. Where? You just reeled them. They'll be like, where? And I'll be like, oh, tell me about you. I also make music. <laughs> you, you throw yeah, it right. <laughs> so, so, um... If someone if someone ever hears you, Christian, and and they just fall in love, and they just like I got to work with the homie, 
how would you prefer they go about hitting you up and and just just offering you can I give you fifty bucks, hundred bucks, anything, two hundred bucks, just to just to throw down on something that I do. How would you a prefer they go about that? And b, I already know what I think is going to be your answer on this. But what you got? If someone was wanting to ex- reach out and work with me, is that what you're saying? Correct. Um, probably not the best answer for you, but I do all my fucking business on Facebook and Messenger, dude. Just, if, if that's the answer you're looking for, Christian O'Neill's Facebook, I that's where I all I'm my just looking about how they right. could go about it. And then I know that in the past you've been very vocal about you mostly don't accept income for a feature. Oh, yeah. If it's like the homies wanting to work and do stuff, people I've done shit with, like obviously we we do music together. Yeah, just hit me up on you know Facebook Messenger, send me what you got. I'll listen to the demo, see what I think of it, plug it into the studio, and within fucking an hour, you should have something done. Has someone ever reached out and and gotten you tried to get you on a song and it's just so outside your wheelhouse you've ever done, but it was just intriguing because it was so different? Yes, uh I mean man, I because everybody has a guitar player, everybody has it seems like a drummer, everybody has a band, everybody has these things without a vocalist, it seems like maybe just because I'm doing that service or working with people but i always have these people and no disrespect but they'll send in this instrumental I'm like what in the fuck am i listening to but if they care about it and they want something on it even if i can't stand like the sound or i don't understand what's happening i still try to work with it because there was a time where i was uploading stuff to myspace dude that was the most cringiest shit you've ever heard in your life i've been and there. everybody laughed at me so <laughs> i i work with, i get some weird stuff dude and some things are a complete headache a lot of my services since we last talked, dude, I I do charge for a lot of stuff, but, you know, for close friends like Richie, you know, me and Richie are working on stuff. I don't know if you know that now. Yeah, uh, but, he has uh, he uh, has told told me and shown me. Shh, shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah. So but it's it sounds great. And Richie is 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 family. He's such a good guy, dude. I get introduced to him through uh, James Lamb from ever since Eve, dude. And we just clicked so fast, bro. But uh. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, dude, homies, I try to like do whatever I can for, and uh, I've got some really wonky shit before, dude, but I try to make it work. Did you bring the hot sauce? Oh my god, this is why I needed. I have to tell you a story. This is why I needed 500 subs on YouTube. And I'm embarrassed to show it, man, but I have to. It's for the stream, dude. That. Do y'all see what this says right here? Can you even see it? it? Says always save. It's from Save a Lot, bro. This is the hot sauce, and with this 500 subs on YouTube, I can afford better hot sauce. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> hell, hell yeah. That's what I was waiting for. That's what I got, dude. It's disgusting, but... No, it counts. And I'm going to go with... Uh... I'm going to combine the mule sauce and the red hot ripplets. If I oh, cannot look stump at you. you. Look at you. If I cannot stump you. If I can stump you... I'm sorry. If, uh... if you know the answer, which I think is the same thing, then I'm regardless. I'm gonna do a hot sauce. If I do stump you, I'm gonna do both. Which Dude, I know I'm doesn't make any sense. It's, it's the vice versa of the normal, but that's just how we do. Because I always do the hot sauce regardless. You're the guest, and that makes it fun. But here's the thing: you get to pick the trivia topic. I need to know oh, what so movie scary. or TV show you've seen so many times that it's impossible I stump you. Because you've seen this movie or TV show so many times. Bro, I think when we did this last time, I think I said the same thing. I think we did something exactly like this, and I'm I I don't we fucking did. barely watch TV. I'm just saying something like Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul. I don't know something like that. I don't watch that much fucking TV. But you've seen <laughs> Breaking Bad more than once, or just once all the way through, and then Better Call Saul, and you got the prequel. All the way through, I think I saw Breaking Bad five times. Haven't in a couple of years, but I'm pretty sure I can. I think I can get it. Dude. I don't think you will. And that's my job. Oh, oh no. Okay. Do you, do you have any weird hobbies or, or or just collectibles? Anything that you do when it's not music day, it's not family day, it's it's just Christian jamming. I got a bunch of a wad of cash. Here we go. We're we're collecting. We're hobbies. Anything. That's the hard thing, dude. Because I am unbelievably, unfortunately, like always doing something. But when I get any time to just chill or whatever, it may sound weird, but I have like. I, I, I'll let fucking candles, bro, and I'll take a good hot bath. I'll fucking lay in a bath, 
deep breathing. I have really shitty anxiety for no reason. My life's pretty awesome, dude. My life's great, but just breathing exercises, walking three times a week. And I watch these like old video gamers uh, on YouTube. There's this channel called Good Old Days Gaming. And it's this guy. He's probably around our age. How old are you, BG? Old. All right. He, he's uh, <laughs> in his 30s. And he uh, does commentary. <laughs> he does commentary about like life and like growing up in the nineties and just just fucking all this random shit. He'll play like Zelda, fucking Rareware games, Xbox, and just bullshit about life. And I I watch those religiously, dude. So it's video game stuff, breathing, try to walk and hike the parks and fucking long baths and breathing exercises if I can. Just not too weird, but that's not weird. Something. That's not weird. This the this... bastard kind of weird. My friends make fun of me, but I like it. I'm gonna fuck with that thing. Do you do? You, I know you said you're 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 so busy. You're always doing something, but do you ever get time to play video games? And if so, what's some of your favorite video games? I get some time, but as I told you, I watch the old shit. I really just I like fucking Switch stuff or old Nintendo Tears of the Kingdom, bro. That Zelda game that just came out, dude. That shit is unbelievable. Switch it blew my mind. Yeah, the Tears of the Kingdom game, dude. That was. Yeah, so like maybe like twice a week, if I can. Sometimes less than that. I'll try to sit here for an hour or two and like play that at night. Um, if I get time, you know, dude, I'm I work at a warehouse three days a week, and then I'm trying to produce stuff. I'm trying to write stuff. If I'm not doing that, I'm trying to mix or edit for people, throw ideas, promote. I mean, you know, dude, you're way busier than me. And then try to hang out with my girlfriend and try to make time for that. So I mean, you know, dude, you were um, you were one of the most busiest fucking people, dude. I've ever met in my life, and I didn't realize how long you'd actually been doing the review things till I heard it on your stream earlier. That's so much dedication, dude. Like, where do you? I gotta ask you, where do you find all the fucking drive to do it all the time? Because without lying, dude, there's days where you just fucking you feel like you can't fucking get through. I'm sure. How do you find this energy all the time? That's inspiring to me. It is a commitment. I there's no other way to say it. There's it's a commitment. It's something that. Uh... This is your interview, by the way, but uh, it's something. <laughs> it's something that uh, I've I've briefly told the story, and I'll try to paragraph it. When I pitched local band Smuggler the first time to the rest of my band, hit him. Everyone laughed at me except for one person, and they were like, "This is a terrible idea. No one will watch this on YouTube." And I was like, "I think it'd be cool if people saw my reaction to a band." I don't even know if reaction videos were popular then. But this is like ten years ago. Not not so much 10 years ago. That's why when I heard that, I was like, I got to ask him that. Yeah, and no one watched the show for thousands of episodes, and I just kept at it and kept at it and finally had a breakthrough and uh, just been grinding. And the thing is, like, you can't you can't have a day off. Like, you can say, oh, I'm going to Disney today. That's great. Film that content. If you get to mm -hmm. that point as a content creator, just make content any way you can. And in my situation, if I know I'm going to Disney, I'll wake up two hours early and shoot three or four reaction videos and just time them throughout the day. And then I'm at Disney all day. But I'm also filming while I'm at Disney and somehow will. Yep. And I never really post stuff like that, but I sh probably yeah. should. But That's sick. Yeah, more, I had to ask, bro. I like, more important it. than my story is your story <laughs> and this trivia <laughs> that I'm going to stump you with right now because in Breaking Bad, Jesse oh. goes home. And his parents are very doubtful that he's clean. They're suspicious of young Jesse. But they kick him out of the house. Why? Why did they kick him out of kick Jesse out of the house? What do they find? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they kicked him the fuck out because they found marijuana. Smoke and they were like, oh my god, he's fucking using this motherfucker. And it was his little brothers. And then he's like, hey homie, don't fucking say nothing. That Am is I an right? elaborate, correct answer. Boy. You gotta drink the whole bottle, honey. No. But I have to do <laughs> I have to do both and then wash it down with chocolate sauce. Oh I have God. to do both of these and then wash it down with chocolate sauce while still doing the interview. And I will come up so with the sorry. second question. The second question is gonna be substantially harder. I'm but so if you. if you were to suggest a thing that chemical youth needs. Or what are you working on in 2024 as far as this will take the band to the next level? Probably getting rid of me. 
No, stop we it. Fucking, for real, for real. We need a band. We need a band. We haven't played one show. We've been online. We've done great, dude. I got to work for some of my favorite artists. Got to hang out with Cameron. But we need a fucking band. We need actual players. I don't care where you live. Pima Kalee songs are not hard. We need them to show up and fucking play it. That's literally it. We need a band. And then um, for 2024, dude, I'm taking the rest of this year just to chill because since 2020, I haven't stopped. And um, I plan to go to bigger producers and start with a song very soon that I have me and my girlfriend on that is a, I, I know it's a fucking rock banger, dude. Um, so going to start going to bigger producers with bigger sound and try to do like music videos for songs, just bigger publicity instead of just releasing the songs one by one on Spotify, just uh, go with a bigger fucking sound. And again, Oklahoma, correct? Unfortunately, but yes. It's there's got to be a scene over there. We just people just don't know how to get a hold of you or, or or that you're even looking for artists. So we we now know what to focus on is we got to figure out some Oklahoma homies that are badass that make metal and we got to get we got the live show going. Dude, because that'd be sick as fuck, man. And I don't want to play not to be disrespectful, but I've played like fucking. Probably a couple hundred tiny shows. I want to get on. I think the sound's cool. Chemically, we're not great, but it's a cool sound. I want to get on a bigger show, even opening for bigger artists with awesome members with a bigger sound that aren't here to fuck around. I really want to play a big show, man. We don't need to do it a lot. Chemically, you songs are dirt easy. I haven't played guitar in years. I can play every one of them right now if you hand me the guitar. It's not that fucking hard, bro. I want to play a fucking show. <laughs> and uh, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> is there is there a uh, a particular artist that you think maybe this this artist requires ten thousand dollars to get on a song as a feature but let's pretend money doesn't matter who is the first artist money doesn't matter and it can't be spencer that uh you would have on a song craig mavitt craig i that was the first vocal line in my life that i ever tried to scream to and i can tell you the song it was rise up by bless the fall I heard it out of my friend's MP3 player in his ear pod, hanging out of his ear, blasting the shit while we're skating. I said, who the fuck is that? Downloaded the song on LimeWire, went home, learned it, and tried to scream to it. And he was almost on American Dreams, fun fact. Uh, Cameron messaged him while we were there, and it just didn't work out because the whole industry was you know, on basically like a lockdown uh, pay because of the COVID and stuff. So it'd probably be Craig, dude. I don't know what Craig costs. But I could probably help in that department for for off stream well, for off stream stuff. Party people! Well, let's see if we can stuff you. What, let's see if we can let's stuff go, let's you. Go, let's do it. Here we go. Who is Gus's partner involving Los Pollos Hermanos? But this partner is killed by Tio. Hector Tio Salamanca takes out Gus's partner. I just want to know the first name. Bro, what the fuck are you talking? Wait, what? Hold on. Gus's partner. So is I taken out by Tio. Now this I'm is so this good. is season four trivia. Oh no! It says it <sighs> says received a scholarship from Gus and went on to work with him. It wasn't Gail. It is no, it not Gail. Gail. I'll give you a pass. But it is the other person besides Gail. One question before we get there. Is it the dude that had his throat slipped? The slip? It doesn't specify. It says this person is very important to, to Gus. He continued to seek revenge from Hector for the rest of his life. Um, Three... Two. I'm out, dude. I'm out. Max. I'm fucking out. Who the fuck is Max? What the fuck? It says, it says, Wait. like Gale, Max receives a scholarship from Gus and goes on to work with him. Their true relationship is unknown, but Max was very important to Gus, and he continued to seek revenge from he uh, vengeance oh my from Hector God. for the rest of his life. This was Gus's partner in Los Pollos Hermanos and is killed by Hector Tio Salamanca. That is that's the best I can do as far as explaining it. Okay, you, yeah, I know. You got me. Fuck. Okay, so now I have to fucking take a shot of this nasty ass hot sauce, right? You do. Excellent. Excellent. Oh my god, bro. 
I got a nicotine pouch in my mouth, too. This is going to be disgusting. Let me take it out. So nasty. Right after that, well, do your thing. Oh. Hey, oh welcome God, to okay. AM Fall, motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Cheers to that. I was hoping I was able to stump you. So we haven't really been able to like officially announce this, but yeah. uh, but Christian's on so many songs for for AM Fall, and I feel like he's he's my go to guy. Not not only just because he's an incredible talent, con- incredible voice, kind of soul, huge heart. Um, he's excited to to work with, and and it's it's always a curveball what I throw you. Like you're, I, I send you, I send you the one that Taiwan made, and it's very like deathcore, complex yeah. arrangement. And then I give you the circus one, and it's completely sideball, different from the other one. And then just, just thank you, a for being so uh, enthusiastic about the music that I send you. But uh, what do you? I guess what do you think about Amphal? Dude, I um I don't know if you saw recently I posted something similar to what you're doing. I said I would love a project, but it was with uh, producers. It was like somebody took like I don't know a song by I don't fucking know, dude, like a, a Periphery, and had like six engineers mix it right, and nobody releases it. And there's a certain deadline, like two months out, and on that deadline, each producer releases their own version of that song mixed. Each version is going to sound different because each person's brain is going to produce something different with the tools they have or not. You're doing that with vocalists. So what I think about that is it's kind of something I've always wanted to experiment with, dude. I just imagine different voices. You don't really hear their other tracks that they did or whatever. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. But all the different blends of style. It is such a genius fucking idea. Earlier you said this is an online project. People aren't really listening. Well, it took you fucking years to get people hopped on the YouTube. It's going to take time, dude. But I think this idea is genius, and I'm so fucking honored to be a part of it, bro. I, it is so fucking I appreciate sick. It is so fun. For the kind words and and seeing the vision and 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 for what we have in store down the road, like the the two songs we have coming up, I I hope we get them both out. Uh, it it always just takes time for for the other artists, and we don't accept everyone. Yeah. We we send it out to so many people that sometimes it doesn't work out, unfortunately, and we have to pick and arrange and make a, like an actual real song. But it is weird, like cutting and slicing up all the stems and rearranging mm-hmm. it to a certain way that it like makes a song that we could present to people but just thank you that for being is... involved in it for real yeah dude like that oh the first one that was on the to wake me up when i got nowhere left to go like some of my vocals were moved in different spots that i didn't even track them on. i was like holy shit like it's so cool to be able to take stems and move them and you said you don't accept everybody that's a good thing you're like what does a job do when a job hires somebody, they take the most, you know, um, valued looking employee and they keep them on to do the job. And if you're not as good, you don't make the cut. You're honest with people. You even told me, remember that fast screaming shit I tried to do, bro? And you were like, yeah, I'm not really a fan of that. <laughs> so I went back in and I. And then it was a like, hundred times better the second time. Dude, even though like, so, dude, I listened back the next day and I was like. And that's like the first time dude. I ever told you that. It was like the one time I was like. This one is like, I don't think the spot for this one. And then you did something different and it was exactly what it needed. And you will need to tell me that again. Everybody's flavor is fucking different. Everybody doesn't dig what the last guy did on some parts. And that's what fucking made it good, bro. I listened the next day to that shit though. And I was like, dude, he's about to block me. He's going to block me on Facebook. (laughs) What the fuck did I send it? I don't know what I was thinking, but point being, it's going to be a fucking hell of a ride, dude. I'm stoked to be a part of it. Hell yeah. Um, is there is there anything that you have not told anyone that may be aware of Christian in general or is watching because of Chemical Youth that you just want to talk about, plug, promote, anything? Mm. Like anything I haven't talked about. Um, the stuff I want to talk about, some of the stuff I just really... With my like producing for other artists, there's some things I can't say because the point of ghostwriting a lot of the time is to not say that you did it. There's stuff that I want to talk about that I really can't, stuff that I can tell you later, but it's like, because you've worked with this artist, just, so it doesn't matter, but it's like. Don't say the name, but d- just a question to roll off that. Does does ghostwriting ever I- incorporate 
as you just did, a high note that maybe that artist can't hit and it's just an uncredited high note buried as a layer of a vocal. I think there is a band that did that with one of my stems that they took. Now, particularly if I'm writing for like a bigger artist, for them as a feature for one of my friends or something, they're going to take my stems and I send them the full MP3 with my mix on it, like I do with uh, your project. Or And then I'll send them an acapella and the lyrics so they can hear it. And sometimes they'll take my acapella and add something. I think this band did this uh, last year. I'll have to see if I can find that. But that, that happens sometimes. Yeah, if it's like really high. But I generally, when I get like a bigger artist or any artist, I go and listen to their catalog and study their range. And I'm like, what can I send them that's not going to be too fucking crazy for them? It, I think it's only happened once. I generally try to study who I work with and their sound to make that a replica just as good as I can. But it's happened, I think, once which is kind of cool. And then you can't talk about it because it's ghostwriting and I'm not credited. I get paid decently, but then I don't get put on. It's like, fuck man, but I know it's cool. Uh, this is, this is a blast, bro. I, I appreciate you being here and just, and just hanging and, and talking this shit with me. And if you could one last time at chemical youth on everything, plug that one more time. Thank you. Fourth watch. For the I got a, after this, I got to tell you a quick funny story. Uh, Chemical Youth on YouTube, Chemical Youth on Spotify, Chemical Youth 95 on Twitter, that's never really used. Chemical Youth TikTok, Instagram is We Are Chemical Youth. All your general bullshit, all streaming services where you can listen to Chemical Youth, it should be on almost every streaming service. To end that plug, this is something hilarious. You want to know how stupid I am, bro? You want to hear a quick story? Yes. When I first, or not I, when OnlyFans first became a thing, bro, I literally thought that was like just like a publicity thing, like to promote your shit, bro. And I made a fucking OnlyFans for Chemical Youth because I thought it was like I didn't study into it. I thought it, it was it, supposed to it, be like it, it, I think it was created that way. But like our perception, like when you hear OnlyFans, you think porn. But I don't think <laughs> it was created that way. It's just what worked for that particular company. And like they rolled with it and like it's become that like porn enterprise that it is like, but I know a bunch of people that have OnlyFans also that has nothing to do with nudity or anything like that. And, really? but, but they get, they get, you know, exactly how you're implying, like frowned upon because when you say, oh, OnlyFans.com slash chemical youth, you're like, oh, well I get to see Christian naked. <laughs> yeah, but like, you don't you get you get stuff no that yeah i guess in that situation do a patreon or something instead but just because of what the site has become but i totally get that like it, it i don't think it was created that way it just has become that i think so i just thought like after i figured it out dude i fucking deleted it i was like i hope nobody saw that bro. i posted on facebook and shit i was like everybody check out my only fans I was like, I hope nobody saw that, and it's gone forever. That was it. Though. That's my that's my story. That's the that's the thing. You asked me if I've never told anybody. That answers that question. Do you think you'll ever upload the video, or and do you still have the video that you took down that we first started this conversation with? Oh, I, I was going to follow on to that. I I don't know, dude. I don't know if I have. You know what? On my dad's Facebook way back, he might actually have had it saved because. He saved another video from that same week where I uploaded a video. So if I can't find the first video I ever did, I can definitely find the second one. You should post um, you should post it and just say it's the first one and then be like <laughs> be like a before and after and have like the line down the middle and then just yeah do all that in the second hey, video. That's a really good idea, honestly. That's not even fucking a joke. That's I'm, I'm serious. I think that would I think that would pop. I think that would pop. He's on TikTok. I do have the first um youtube video ever there is on my dad's youtube uh the first video ever recorded of me playing guitar bro it's on youtube bro and it's so fucking funny it's like Grab it's it. 2000 Take, use that welcome we welcome that content back in for sure I'm, I'm going to dude it was like 2007 when it was uploaded on youtube it's still there and i'm like what the fuck is this christian i love you sir you're amazing i appreciate everything you do for am fall but more importantly for our ears no matter what project you're involved in you are a very kind soul and you you treat people with respect and you take your work professionally. I don't think I've ever worked with anybody ever in my entire life that gets me back what I'm asking for in 48 hours or less. 
and usually less your professional Dude, self. I, I really appreciate you, man. Like, no lie. You said the interview's about me, but you inspire me. You're fucking amazing, bro. I'm honored to be a part. And when somebody sends you their hard-earned product that they've worked for, um, whether they're paying me or they're not, and it's something I'm interested in, that means everything. Life is short. We're all going to die really fucking soon. And if somebody is trying to work with you on something they're passionate about and you can bring back to the world and share, dude, you need to work your fucking ass off, dude. You know how many people fucking laugh at fucking five-hour turnaround time? They say, you're going to suck. It's going to be horrible. Well, get better. Work hard and care about what you fucking do. No Not days everything off. you do is going to be fucking great. But yeah, dude, I, I appreciate you so much, dude. You're a fucking legend, dude. No days off. If you're not working as hard as, as you could be, somebody else somewhere else is working as hard as you or more and wants it more than you, and that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. so exactly. We, we, don't, we don't live by that. Ladies and gentlemen. Fuck those guys. Christian O'Neill of Chemical Youth and Ampla! Give me a hell yeah! Yeah! Officially and Paul. This will be on YouTube tomorrow morning, brother. Of course, we'll be talking soon. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much for doing this. Dude, I fucking love you, man. I'm stoked to see it. Have a fantastic night. Cheers. And I'm going to work. Too, man. Uh, I'm going to holler at Craig. Yeah! Hey, bro. If he hates it, he hates it. We'll see, man. I'm, I'm down for whatever. I'll do what I can. Enjoy the rest appreciate of your night, you, man. man. I appreciate it. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band. Smoke out.